Hello everyone, welcome to the fourth and final installment of my discussion on the receptive skills of communication. So what again are the receptive skills in communication? We have critical reading, critical viewing, media literacy, and of course, critical listening. And in this particular video lecture, I will focus on critical listening. Before anything else, let's distinguish the difference between hearing vis-a-vis -vis listening. What makes hearing different from listening? When we say hearing, the perception of our ears to sounds, whereas when we say listening, we have to pay more attention to what is being perceived by our ears. So it entails more attention, more concentration on the part of the listener. Wolvin and Coakley distinguished five types of listening. And these are, first, discriminative listening, which allows people to separate facts from opinions. The next one is comprehensive listening, which is, from the term itself, comprehensive. It seeks understanding on the part of the receiver of the message. The third one is critical or evaluative listening. It is used to evaluate a message before you actually accept or reject it from upon hearing the information from the sender of the message. The fourth one is therapeutic listening, which allows no judging on the part of the receivers of the message. And the fifth one is appreciative listening, which is mainly what we do when we listen to entertainment and, of course, music. Now, I would want to emphasize on the following, namely, the first one, the active or reflective listening. When we say reflective listening, from the term reflect, we are able to have a deeper comprehension about the things that we receive from our speakers or from the communicators. Actually, Jerome Tabata B. Abdar and Rajabi in 2016 mentioned that active listening in managerial communication can be very helpful in creating better work environments. Actually, because active listening is a skill which also distinguishes a leader from that of a boss. In addition, in developing the fine arts of listening, Hal Ritter Jr. and Patricia Wilson in 2006 explained that when engaged in active listening, the listener mirrors or reflects the information by restating or paraphrasing what the speaker has said. Okay, so it means there is implied comprehension on the part of the listener because he or she is able to restate what has been said by the communicator. The next one is relational or dialogic listening. When we say dialogic from the term dialogue, it entails two or more participants. That's why when we use the term relational listening, the emphasis is on how we build relationships among the communicators in the communication process. So when we listen, according to Iceberg, Eisenberg and Goodall in 1993, we actually seek face-to-face -face interaction. We not only pay attention to the verbal message, but also to the nonverbal message. And then, the relational model of communication recommends that even if you believe you have learned all there is to know about another individual in a relationship with you, you should be open to modifying your assumptions and conclusions based on new information acquired in each communicative exchange. That's according to Bromwell in 2006. Now, the gist of this discussion is actually on critical listening. 
And what is critical listening in the first place? Critical listening requires you to not only exercise skills to comprehend information, but also to make assessments and decisions about what you actually hear. So upon hearing information, you have to know whether or not what you heard is valid information. Okay? You have to look into the authenticity of the message being received on your end. Now, this usually involves persuasive information. So we would want as much as possible to convince our listeners that what we are saying are true or correct. So you must recognize fallacies and sort out various facts from information if you're a good or a critical listener. What else? Listening also requires critical thinking, of course. You need to balance the arguments. You have to weigh the advantages and disadvantages or the benefits and the ill effects of the differing viewpoints of people. What else? Critical listening is the ability to distinguish information vis-a-vis -vis misinformation. So again, it's not actually only critical listening, it's also critical viewing and of course media literacy and critical reading that would help us. So if we analyze, it's actually a collective effort on our part in order for us to become critical recipients of messages. And, of course, when we mention the term critical listening, it also refers to the ability to distinguish which messages are false and misleading will help you be cautious or be careful later when you evaluate the messages that you hear or that you listen to. Now, in 2010, Spears mentioned uh, about the following characteristics of critical listeners. The first one is engaged. Okay? So you deliberately listen because you really want to hear the different points of view of the speakers. Of course, number two would be full attention. You have to be fully attentive. You have to make or let your speaker finish his or her talk before you reflect and or before you take a response. What else? The third one is you have to be systematically analytical. You have to look into not only the surface meaning of the messages, but you look into the claims and ideas which are being emphasized in between or in the message per se of your communicator okay, or the sender of the message. You have to apply the elements of reasoning. You have to analyze. You have to dissect what is really being meant by the speaker of the message. The fourth one is you have to focus on clarity because like what I always say, the communication process would not be consummate if there would be no understanding or comprehension between and among the speakers and the receivers of the message. So clarity is very important. You have to make sure that what your intention is, is actually what is, what or how the receiver of the message received your message. Okay, so you get my point here. Clarity is highly encouraged to avoid miscommunication. And of course, you have to be responsive as well. That's the fifth one. You have to be able to um, give a feedback about what the speaker has said. You, ha you can recall, you can summarize everything if you are responsive. What else? You have to be empathetic also. You have to understand that the speakers have different values and opinions which may or may not be different from what you 
believe in. And of course, if you want to be a critical listener, you have to be collaborative. You have to respect all those differing opinions of people and come up with a productive and more analytical point of view about things. So what comprises a competent listener? He or she, of course, uses eye contact appropriately. You have to look into the eyes of your receiver. What else? You have to pay attention both to the verbal and nonverbal actions. The third one, you have to be patient. Do not interrupt. You wait for the speaker to finish so that they would do the same when you're the one who is speaking. What else? You have to be responsive towards both the verbal and nonverbal expressions. You have to be sensitive also. The fifth one, you have to ask questions in a non-threatening tone. You have to be more sensitive in such a way that you... Try to comment in the most um, what's this sensitive manner. Okay? You take into consideration how the receiver might feel upon hearing your message. So that's the time you make use of polite expressions as well so that it would not sound offens offensive on their part. Okay, what else? You paraphrase, restate, or summarize what the speaker says so as to ensure that accuracy is um, emphasized. Number seven, provide constructive verbal and nonverbal feedback because that would help boost the confidence of the speaker also if you comment in a constructive way that's why we have what we call as constructive criticism number eight you have to be emphatic you have to make an effort to understand the speaker despite barriers let's say there might be some uh, communication barriers there might be some technical barriers and so on and so forth you have to put yourselves in the shoes of the speaker so that when it's your turn to talk he or she would also listen to you. Number nine, demonstrate interest in the speaker as a person. So bottom line here is you have to show respect if someone is speaking. Number 10, demonstrate a caring attitude and is willing to listen. So that would also um, motivate the speaker to really bring out his or her message whenever he or she talks. Number 11, do not criticize and do not judge a speaker based on what he or she says or probably what he or she commits as mistakes whenever he or she talks. And of course, last but not the least, you have to be open-minded. Again, we all have different beliefs, values, and attitudes toward certain issues. We have to take everything with an open mind. What about an ineffective listener? So he or she is the person who interrupts the speaker and shows that he or she is impatient. He or she wants the speaker to finish the talk already and it shows both through his or her verbal and nonverbal behavior he or she also does not make eye contact and or the eyes are wandering what else he or she is distracted and or fidgety does not pay attention to the speaker okay? looks at his or her gadget while the speaker is talking so all those are manifestations that you are not into what the speaker is talking about okay so that is number four shows disinterest in the speaker what else he or she gives the speaker little or no verbal and or non-verbal feedback. So as if the speaker is non-existent. Number six, changes the subject. 
What else? Judgmental, close-minded, talks too much, and sometimes it um as it is very distracting already on the part of the speaker. What else? Number ten, self-preoccupied. You are uh what? Your mind is wandering. Number eleven, you give unwanted advice or sometimes unsolicited advice. And of course, too busy to listen you would know anyway if the one you're talking to is an effective listener or not so the bottom line here is listening is an essential skill that you need in your personal academic and professional life so it is something that we have to enhance among us to be effective communicators not only in the workplace, not only in school, but also in our personal and interpersonal lives. So thank you very much for listening to our lecture on the receptive skills of communication.